Gvela Glan. The Kira Metz questline in Velen is a favorite of mine. It's filled with interesting set pieces, memorable moments, and most importantly for the purpose of this upload, ridiculously impressive attention to detail. This video, like several others I have planned, came about in a very natural way. In preparation for the launch of this channel, I have spent a lot of time experimenting with The Witcher 3, just trying to do things in the most idiotic, illogical, and unlikely ways possible, in the hopes of uncovering little details that most players will never see. Those experiments, of course, extended to the questline with Kira Metz, and I probably spent more than 15 hours just experimenting with Kira's handful of quests doing things over and over again in different ways, including some pretty creative ways of having Geralt be mean to poor Kira. Of course, not every experiment paid off, nowhere near every experiment paid off, because I tried some goofy stuff, but when they did, I will just say that finding little details in this game and seeing what the devs accounted for is just so satisfying. I had so many Kira-related details I wanted to share that I thought it was worthy of its own video, and I also think Kira is a fun character, so win-win. Also, I feel like I need to address the ice giant in the room. Thank you so much to everyone who has subscribed. Three weeks ago when I posted my first video on this channel, I had zero subscribers. And over the past, I don't know, six days, I've gone from about 150 subs to a little over 5,000. This channel is the definition of a passion project. I love The Witcher, and it's tough for me to put into words how excited I am to have an outlet for something I'm really passionate about, and I hope it comes through in my videos. Anyway, I am just going to take on the details I found in the order of the quests they appeared in, so we'll start out with the very first Kira-related quest, Hunting a Witch. This is the quest where Geralt heads to the town of Midcops to follow a Ciri-related lead on a village witch. Of course, at this point in the game, Geralt doesn't know the local witch is Kira, he just needs directions to where the currently unknown witch lives. Now, as I'm sure most of you know, you can go about finding Kira's hut in a variety of ways. One option is to just show up if you're replaying and know where it is, or if you happen to stumble upon it. However, what the game wants and directs you to do is to head to the town of Midcops and speak with the locals about the witch's whereabouts. There are three main ways to go about getting this information, as well as a secret and ridiculous fourth option. To refresh your memories on the main options, the first is to speak to this old man just chilling at the village entrance. I would guess this is what most first-time players end up doing, because he's right there when you enter the village and he'll tell you where Kira can be found without any resistance. The second option is to eavesdrop on these two ladies outside a house, who are speaking incredibly loudly for two people who apparently don't want to be overheard. Finally, there is a man standing outside a fenced area. If you speak to him directly, he will basically tell you to F off, you can't actually enter a conversation with him at first, but if you speak to his wife and then go back to him or just talk to his wife before ever speaking to him in the first place, a conversation begins in which he'll still tell you to F off, but you are now able to either axe him or pay him 50 crowns, both of which work. Now, this is where the game has a hidden extra option for getting the information on Kira, and I just love this one. If you exit the dialogue with the peasant without paying or using Axie on him, and then just hang out and wait for about three real life minutes, he will eventually start walking out of the village. If you follow him, you will witness him getting attacked by a pack of Neckers, and by acting quickly, you can save him. I ended up having to do this three times because the first I had the exploding Quen perk on which contributed to his death, the second time the cutscene bugged out a bit and was in a bush, but finally third time around I got it right, and you can have an entirely unique conversation with the peasant in which he'll give you directions to Kira's hut without any bribery or you having to use Axie on him. Thank ye. Was a hair away from giving up my soul out of fright itself. Point me in the direction of your local witch's hut. It wouldn't be right to refuse you after you saved my skin. Know the small pond near the village? Path leads off from it. Follow that till you come across a lone rock. Walk around that, then to the woods. Find the old cart. You're there. Thanks. It's just... Don't harm her, sir. Word of your kind's reached these parts. My kind, meaning? Well, the witch-burning kind. Next up, let's move to the first real interaction with Kira, which takes place more or less directly after you get directions to her hut. Now, in this particular game that you are watching gameplay from, I had purposely done everything related to the main quest completely out of order. I had already went to Novigrad, helped Triss, and rescued Dandelion, then sailed to Skellige, met up with Yennefer, and completed the main quest there, 
all before ever speaking to Kira, which usually would be among the first things you do when arriving in Velen, as her quest line is assigned to you almost immediately. It's like a level 5 quest. Doing things out of order like this changes up the end of your first conversation with Kira in a pretty cool way. In a normal game where you haven't been to Novigrad and Skellige before meeting Kira, she will tell you that she was recently asked about Ciri by a nearby elven mage, and when Geralt asks what the elf wanted with Ciri, this is how the normal interaction goes. He said what he wanted with Ciri? Only that they were to meet in Velen. He wished to know if she'd arrived before he did. But if you've already been to Skellige, Geralt has some extra information and context about the situation that he otherwise wouldn't, because Yennefer resurrected Skjall, and the two of them looked through his memory, so Geralt already knows that Ciri was traveling with a mage of some sort, and he is able to connect the dots during his conversation with Kira, which results in a few extra and unique lines. He say what he wanted with Ciri? Only that they were to meet in Velen. He wished to know if she'd arrived before he did. Ciri visited Skellige earlier. She was traveling with a mage, this elf most probably. The girl crossed half the world to get here. Care to tell me what this is about? Wish I knew. Okay, let's move on to the very next Kira quest, Wandering in the Dark, which is the one where you head into some elven ruins in search of the mystery mage. I have a few different little things to mention about this quest. The first, and I'll call this one more of an honorable mention because it is logical, but just something I had never considered because why would I? and it has to do with being able to skip the awesome mini boss fight where you fight clones of Geralt and Kira. This is, in my opinion at least, one of the most memorable fights in the game, and after it's over, you even get a nice little book reference. Uh, anything like that ever happened to you before? Well, almost. A while back, a certain Doppler took a shot at impersonating me. Yes? And? He hated being me. Felt uncomfortable. Dopplers are kind-hearted by nature. Now, if you don't remember what leads up to this fight, you view one of the Avalok projections in this little room, and then have to do some investigating in the area to figure out how you can get out. Doing that investigation will lead to the clone boss fight, but if you want to, you can actually just skip the boss fight entirely. If you decide to just ignore all of the investigation and just dive straight into the water, you can just head to Ciri's Horse Kelpie immediately, which allows you to move on without ever fighting the Geralt and Kira clones. Like I said, this one is more of an honorable mention because A, I don't really think you should skip that fight because it's awesome, and B, it is logical that if you don't investigate, the fight would never happen, and I also would guess that this has to be something speedrunners do because it definitely saves a good chunk of time. Okay, let's skip forward all the way to the end of the quest. You've defeated the Wild Hunt Warrior Nithril, inspected the lab, and are now getting ready to leave the ruins. Here, Kira will ask you for help finding a magic lamp that was apparently promised to her by the mage before he disappeared. You can refuse and say you need to go to Crookback Bog immediately because you get a lead on that while inspecting the lab, or you can agree and help her find the lamp. Now, if you say you'll do one thing but then don't follow through, CDPR has lines prepared for both of those lying scenarios. If you say you'll help but then turn around to the exit which is directly behind you, Kira will yell after you. You were supposed to help me! Geralt! Someone placed an illusion here. Similarly, if you refuse to help but then follow Kira anyway, Geralt and her have some banter for that scenario as well. See ya, Kira. Gavella Glan. He must have left it somewhere here. How about that? You changed your mind. Miss me? Hardly. Now, focus. <sighs> Looks like another damned riddle to me. Continuing the trend of how well this video seems to be flowing together, this next detail has to do with the very next interaction with Kira, when you stop by her hut after the quest in the Elven Ruins. Stopping by leads to her asking you for help with the curse on Fike Isle. However, the conversation with Kira can go differently if you happen to sail to Fike Isle before you visit her and learn about the place from her. While you're there, if you visit before ever speaking to Kira about the Isle, you can even go into the tower and inspect the objects that don't require the magic lamp that Kira will give you later. You can even open up and find the secret passage to the mage's lab. Keep in mind though, the inspection quotes on the items are the same as they usually are, but they still make sense from Geralt's perspective, even though they might be a little confusing to a first time player. Anyway, if you then go back to Kira, your conversation with her about the Isle will be slightly different. 
Under normal circumstances where you haven't already been to Fike Isle, this is how the conversation goes. Mentioned you wanted something from me. I did, and still do. The Cursed Isle on Lake Windama, you've heard of it, I'm sure. The local peasants mumble incessantly about it, about the wraiths that haunt it. They claim none who go there return. How did it come to be cursed? That's what I don't know. Alternatively, if you've already stumbled upon the place, Geralt will tell her that. They claim none who go there return. I managed to. But while on the island, I did sense something strange. How did it come to be cursed? That's what I don't know. Our next detail takes us to near the end of the Fike Isle quest, although I do need to set this one up a little bit before we actually get to the detail. After you have set out to Fike Isle, explored the tower, and spoken to the Pesta, you have some options. Annabelle the Pesta will ask you to return her bones to Graham, her lover who is living in the nearby village of Oriton. You can refuse or accept her request, but for this detail, you need to accept. Once you head to Oriton and find Graham's little shack and speak to him, you tell him what happened to Annabelle and that he needs to bury her bones so she can finally rest and the Isle can be free of her curse. He takes the bones and tells you to hit the road. Graham won't actually do anything with the bones until you leave, he will just stand in front of his weird shrine to his dearly departed and make disturbing noises. Ugh. 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 Once you take his advice and leave him be, you will almost immediately hear him screaming loudly inside the hut, and the game will give you a new objective. Turn around and see what's going on. Inside, you'll find Graham dead, and Geralt will realize that Annabelle wasn't just a ghost, she was a pesta. He didn't realize that up until that point. He thought she was harmless. You then need to return to Kira and tell her what happened. So it ended well. Mm. I lifted the curse, so the island's clear. Annabelle's soul is free. Thing is... Turned out she's a pesta. Graham's dead. So, let's rewind a little bit, specifically to the moment when you leave Graham's hut after giving him the bones. When you hear him yelling, ignoring your new objective to investigate and simply running away without looking into the loud screams will lead to a completely different conversation with Kira, where instead of Geralt telling her what he knows to have happened, he'll basically say, eh, I gave him the bones, so I assume he took care of things. So it ended well. Graham just needed to bury her bones. So I'm assuming it did. I just love this. I mean, Geralt is basically saying, eh, the curse is probably broken. I mean, I left it in the hands of this random stupid peasant, but whatever, I guess. No big deal. Sadly, the game does not account for the fringe possibility of you not following the objective of investigating the screams, then returning to Kira, and then again returning to Graham Shack. If you go back after doing all of this, the Pesta will just be hanging out there. It won't attack you, and you can't do anything to it. It's just chilling there next to her shrine and the corpse of her dearly departed. So, I guess my head cannon in this scenario was that the Pesta decided to settle down and live a peaceful life in the modest village of Oriton, ignoring the smell of decay, of course. Now, after Fike Isle has been dealt with, there wasn't really anything too unusual to be found in the follow-up mission, the romance one. And that is the last real Kira mission. After that, Kira's appearances are pretty on the rails because they're so dependent on whether you sent her to Kaer Morin, killed her yourself, or let her take the notes to Radovid. I mean, Kira's fate is so dependent on you. She can have a wide range of outcomes. She can end up impaled on a pike in the middle of Novigrad, or she can end up impaled by Geralt and then butchered by Geralt, or she can end up off enjoying a happy life with Lambert, which is my preferred ending for Kira. That said, that wraps up everything I have for Kira Metz in this video. If you enjoyed it, please do let me know. I have really been appreciating the feedback and the kind comments. They are so enjoyable for me to read from those who clearly love The Witcher as much as I do. As I understand things, leaving a like does help find videos and audience as well, so I would definitely appreciate that if you do enjoy this type of content. And I will just say I am really excited to share everything I have in the works. I have a Triss-related video I am working hard on, as well as another project I really want to wrap up before Witcher Season 2 drops, as I have a lot of thoughts on the show so far. I also have a ton of this type of content planned, covering alternate outcomes and rare dialogue, and just in-depth stuff on The Witcher game, so be ready for that, and feel free to subscribe and turn on notifications if you do want to know when I post. I am going to try to post weekly videos, but I will say I am a full-time student, so it might not always happen if they're big projects. I mean, between the in-game experimenting, writing, recording, editing, etc., a video like this I must have at least 40 hours sunk into, and that might be a lowball. I did create a Twitter for this channel a few days ago, so if you do want to give that a follow-up, I will definitely keep people up to date on what I'm working on and when videos are coming. Anyway, thank you all again, I hope you enjoyed this video and continue to enjoy the content to come, 
and I will see you in the next one. Hunting dog. Can't see any connection to Kelpie. Must you touch everything? Geralt, are you alright? You might say so.